Yo ho ho! What's going on, boys? This is Grim Reaper bringing you One Punch Man Chapter One Six Eight Review. Um, let's get into it quick because there's a lot to cover, but we gotta make it quick. Uh, like the video, subscribe. Let's get it started. Um, Saitama's getting stronger. First off, I'd like to say, great chapter, amazing chapter, spectacular way of ending this fight. There's some controversy as well thrown in there, but. It's to be expected in any kind of way. With a fight like this, with so many eyes on it like this, you're bound to have groups of people, even minorities, even large minorities, that are going to disagree with how it happened. I would like a redraw, personally, but I'm okay with what we have right now. I think it's spectacular either way. I'm not expecting it, so whatever happens, happens. But amazing job. And I and I can, I think it's fair to say Saitama versus Goro was the best fight in One Punch Man. <laughs> and probably one of the better fights that we've had in all of manga um, probably in the last five years so we said you could expand that more so we could talk about a bunch of different things but let's talk about One Punch Man um, Saitama's getting stronger this is a huge point of controversy a huge reveal um, a crazy detail that's just been dropped to us this is important, this is big, because the assumption that most individuals have coming into the story of One Punch Man, not only just reading the title, but even getting into it for quite a while, personally, this is the viewpoint that I had. The understanding is that Saitama isn't getting stronger, that Saitama is, his power level is unknown. This is why also sometimes people confuse the uh, Saitama's uh, uh, character archetype with being a gag character. Because it seems to be that he just beats every single obstacle that he encounters. But the reality of the case is, once you actually read One Punch Man, and, I don't know, maybe read 20, 30, 40 page, uh, chapters or whatever, you start to really understand, and, and you get it, you get the, the first hints of it in the beginning, in the first five chapters. But once you continue reading, you start to understand that it's not that Saitama's a gag character. We just haven't met his match yet. Case in point, the entire reason for his, or at least in the beginning of the storyline, his his entire cause of being, his great desire, what he's wanted for so long, a, a good fight. It's now that we're seeing that it's it's not so much that Saitama doesn't have a high limit, or or, or doesn't have a limit whatsoever, like the gag, um, a uh, uh, crew, or theorists believed. <laughs> we've just reached it and it was at a point that was unexpected in both good and bad ways my personal viewpoint in the bad way and i'll explain the good way as well well the good way is easy people didn't think this time i was going to be able to to rip apart <laughs> io <laughs> not one-handed like this or even or even before that or even before that being able to take a gamma ray burst attack like that ridiculous ridiculous like those are those are feats on, on that side that maybe people would have expected but wow then on the opposing side i thought saitama's power level would be much higher than this like and it's not even necessarily where it would be like what feat you would need for that i just thought that it wouldn't be goro who would show us how strong Saitama is for the limit of his power. Like, I didn't think that. And, 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 and to be honest, throughout the entirety of the fight, if you reread it, there aren't that many moments where it feels like Saitama's being overwhelmed. It seems like he's in control, he's aloof, and he's has the leg up in the fight the entire time. Even being hit by the gamma ray burst. And that's what happened. Goro, Saitama comes back after the after the situation happens where, where Goro radiates and kills damn everybody on the surface. And then we go to the scenario <laughs> where Saitama shows up and finds Genos' core. Or gets his Genos' core thrown at him. And then he's enraged. At no point while Saitama was enraged that I feel that he was being ma matched or overwhelmed. And that's what this graph is addressing or or I guess implying if you look at it. <laughs> it it's it's literally implying <laughs> that at a certain point 
like Saitama and Guerrero were damn near even. <laughs> on page 17, it, it definitely shows that. The black uh, on this line graph, which is a time <laughs> and whatever the variable you want to measure. <laughs> yeah, Guerrero and Saitama's lines are damn near on top of each other until they start to separate more so and more so and more so. I don't think there's any way around it. A line graph, like, you don't have translation issues with line graphs. If they're not labeled, which it isn't in this case, maybe, and that's really the only claim, but the line graph is pretty straightforward. And I don't want to accept it. I don't want this to be the case, but I think we have to talk about what the reality is. The reality is, is that in this fight, Cosmic Guerrero, at a certain point, was just below Saitama's power level. Then Saitama decided or er, proceeded to expand upon that difference. His his power level, the exponent of his growth, was much larger than Goro's. Much, much larger. I guess, and it's hard to say because this line graph only goes back so far. We the point or the portions that we're seeing here, where Goro was similar to, if not matching Saitama, weren't that long. It wasn't that long. It's probably whenever he turned or got the cosmic influence, as Saitama mentioned at the end of the chapter. Still, though, to think that cosmic was actually matching Saitama, and that's why his exponent of growth changed or grew or increased so rapidly, so much more rapidly, because that's what that's the implication is, is that his exponent of growth throughout the entirety of the storyline was at X. And by Goro getting this strong, he made, he increased X. <laughs> like, like that's how crazy it was. Like his power level is different than the exponent of growth that he has. Like that's, that's a variable. That's X. And we can call it 2X, 3X, whatever you want to call it. We can label it 4X. <laughs> that bitch just blew up, bro. That bitch just blew up, bro. 50X, bitch. <laughs> 100, 135,000 KX, bitch. Jupiter. What do we call it right there? Jupiter busting X, bitch. That's where they jumped to. Just because Goro, technically because Goro was a stimulus. I don't, we can't, damn, bro. We're, we're, we're way over the mark. We got to keep this pushing, bro. You get, you get what I'm saying, though. It's confirmed that Goro's power level, the, the power level that Goro reached was a catalyst for Saitama's uh, change in growth exponent. That's why he got that much stronger, that much faster. He was already getting stronger at a crazy rate and got to a crazy ass power level. But the rate at which he was growing or getting stronger wasn't changing or wasn't increasing because there was nothing there to challenge him and there's nothing there to push him. Goro became that stimulus and now that his exponent has continued to grow even more so. It's even crazier now to the point that it reached the point of busting Jupiter. That's what I believe that interpretation or we're first to interpret from that. Um, the other big part you should take from that is that Goro's, or Saitama is not a gag character confirmed. Uh, there are multiple different reasonings. This is another reasoning to add into that. If you still had some implication, if you still have friends that are standoffers about it, or if you have some casuals that are saying that about the story of One Punch Man, or if in debates you hear that. No, read the story and it's clear as day. Saitama's not some gag character. He has crazy development behind him that we're getting to slowly, part by part, and it's tremendous, deep as hell. This is a scene, not a shonen. It's not pretending, bit. Um... The serious sneeze busted, um, busted Jupiter. <laughs> One does a really good job of, like, leading into the whole, like, uh, uh, there was nobody left to, to challenge him or to see his growth. There was nobody, there was no longer anybody left to measure what level Saitama's strength had reached. Again, more of a de declaration that there was a catalyst of seeing Saitama grow. Um, but... This serious sneeze. It's obvious that the t that the serious table flip and this serious sneeze are things that may have happened in the webcomic that are being translated or put in position here. I don't think the rest of these attacks necessarily... And the serious punch and the normal punch series don't necessarily like seem to correlate. Or these seem to be gag attacks. Like, coincidentally, he sneezed and they were so strong that it just like that. And we're going to name it a serious sneeze. That's what it seems like this. That this attack is. But the serious punch or normal punch, for example, or consecutive normal punches seem to be straightforward, um, more uniform or, or more congruent with the rest of the attacks we see in the series. Even even fewer uglies like um, 
a quirky uh, forearm caving punch, like calling out what his attack is going to do, <laughs> and naming it that. Like that's that's clever, but that I think that's more tolerable or cooler, if I'm going to say it, uh, to me personally, than a serious sneeze. And I know, like I said, it's in web comics, so we're paying homage to it, and it's there. I think the vast majority of the community sees it as that, sees it as paying homage, and they enjoy it or like it or look forward to seeing that. Or we're, we're looking forward to seeing these attacks show up in the manga. Being reiterated to their exactitude in the manga. And I can definitely appreciate that. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. And like I said, it's the majority opinion in my personal belief. I just have a different opinion. Either way, we're talking about the, the sneeze that busted Jupiter. And this is crazy. This is crazy. Not only does this, not only does this shut up the conversations about Goku and Saitama. Like, stop talking to me. It also sets up the conversations about Superman and Saitama. You now have to go to variants in other comic versions, non-main DC storylines, to find a Superman strong enough to compete with Saitama right now in his casual in his call casualness. Like, let's stop pretending. All right, we've for a while now we were at the scale, if not surpassing the scale, of top tier One Piece characters. We're now past that. We're now past that. We're not completely past that. Like, even even Bleach characters are starting to pale in comparison to, to at the minimalist, at the minimalist top three in regards to Goro, Saitama, and Blast. But, whew, boy, this is a whole different, not only do we have questions, because whatever, whatever the, um, the Earth Cutter occurred in the Tatsumaki versus Sarochi fight. Um, we saw the consequence of the tidal wave and all the things for things that happened. I would have liked to see more because I would expect more, but that was good enough and I enjoyed it. I'd like I would like to see what the aftermath of not only him busting Io throughout this fight, but then doing the stupider. What's what the hell? Like I don't I <laughs> I haven't seen a scenario like I watch a lot of videos, I look, I read up a lot of stuff about space, you know, it's interesting to me. I haven't seen any type of scenario entertained or even theorized about what if something hit Jupiter like this and dispersed this much gas. Like, I, I don't know, bro. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I would love to see some big YouTuber or some of the big scientific, uh, 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 scientific um, or science communicators address this especially like kyle hill from um i forgot the, the the two channels that he's done like nerd or something like that or one of the other ones that he's done but i would love to see his take on um on this situation here in one punch man and i might actually try and get the community to go and spam his videos to get him to talk about this what would happen if somebody busted jupiter like this bro um let's see here let's continue um so it seems like we can confirm that Blast and Goro's portal powers, the portal powers that um, Blast copied, that Goro copied from Blast. Um, I guess there was some like conversation. To me, there was some confusion about whether it was like some tech from his suit or there was his actual power. Whatever the case is, Goro copied it, and it seems to be that it works through line of sight. So as Goro mentioned, um, anything that he could see, he can make a portal to. I'll read it verbatim here. It says, "If it's in my range of vision, I can teleport there." That's exactly the case. He can, put a, he can put a portal there if he can see it. And Goro's range of vision was crazy. To be able to see in detail the Earth and the Moon from Jupiter? Ridiculous. And it looks like they're a little bit far far away from Jupiter. Because um, of the explosion here from the attack. But oh my god, bro. Like. Because they're flying away. They're flying away from Io right now, but still, like, geez. Um, yeah, so it's so it's cool to see that we got some detail into Bla how Blast's powers work because he's gonna be the character that stays on or progresses later on in the story. Um, we got some strong development or some more detail into what uh, Saitama's uh, uh, morality is, so. We kind of knew that he wasn't. We kind of knew he wasn't going for power because he was on Earth, but we didn't have that to be the exact reason. We didn't know that was the like confirmed until a few chapters ago, where he was letting loose. And it, it's not even there that he said it. Like, 
<laughs> he was talking about letting loose on Earth, I believe. No, no, no. It was on, it was on Jupiter or Io that he said it. But still, he was pissed. He let off a serious punch that was probably going to bust the Earth on, on Earth. So maybe it isn't fair to say that that Saitama was holding back because he was on planet Earth. <laughs> maybe, maybe it isn't fair to say that. Either way, the fact that Saitama told Goro after he was down and defeated, basically, that because I'm a hero and I do this, I'm, I'm, I'm bad at this, but because I'm a hero, I'm not going to kill you. And because of Taria. To me, the fact that he's a hero, even though he's having this moral dilemma about hero, is the bigger or more important factor going on here. Yes, the whole Tario thing um, awoke Goro uh, uh, to, the, to, to Tario in the reality of the situation. And yes, it did. It is the catalyst as to why Goro tried and succeeded in teaching Saitama time travel. I think... And we'll see. Because his development could be changed. It could be readdressed. Especially like how um, Blast and the boys are going to be readdressed. He could lose that development. But, as for right now, I think it's still fair to consider that Saitama's having doubts about his 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 hero journey. Like, he's losing confidence because of his failures. And it doesn't have to do with strength. Because like we saw in the, in the, in the King conversation, that these are problems that strength just it it won't resolve it won't fix so i already said it that's that's the whole reason behind him mentioning tadio or whatever or, or the 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 effect of um saitama mentioning tadio to Goro and turn into that but it shouldn't be lost on us that saitama's doubting his hero journey and there are, there are more things that he needs to improve upon to be the best hero, not the strongest. Um, so in the conversation that um, that Goro has with Saitama, he admits that he was given power. Uh, and I'll read the phrase where I'm deriving this, this definition from. Um, Sorry, I should have had it pulled up already, but um, this is right here. You've been acting really weird ever since you fell down from the sky. Are you sure some weirdo didn't do something to you? Then Goro responds, if they did, it's because my spirit was too weak. This is this is talking about in resistance to the deal and not taking the offer. That's why it was a whole partial thing. That's why he kind of took his hand and slapped. That's what that was signifying. Goro's weakness is why he got this power. His lack of spirit is, uh, as is translated here, but that's really what it is. His lack of willpower is the reason why he got this boost. And yeah, he did the most of it, he took the most, he took advantage of it, but it's like Blast pointed out. It doesn't seem like your intent, your intentions are of your own, and that's why, in connection to the rest, to the end of the chapter. That's why Goro yells out, you have to stop this ominous end. And that's why he, he was calling himself, quote unquote, the ominous end or whatever, continuously. Like, that's what that was for. That's what that connection is. That's what you're, spo that's what you're supposed to link. The ominous end is Goro. You're supposed to stop that. You can't stop him from... He couldn't stop him from taking the deal. But he stopped that ominous end that God was actually pushing for. That God was affiliated with. That's what it was. Man. <sighs> There's a quote in here that's worth addressing. Um, it's in regards to Saitama and Goro 
clinging to support. I'll read to you the quote here verbatim. Now, the one I wanted to save first by changing the world. Because of me, he's... You wanted to save him? You weren't just clinging to him for support? It's hard to put into words, but Goro needed someone to ground him. And it was Tadia. Because he wasn't. Tadia was the one keeping him sane. And then you see Saitama. You see the core that he has in his hand. And then Goro puts it together. Is that what is that what you're doing too? There's no way a person with that kind of power can keep in their right mind. Like, there's more, and there's a burden to being the strongest there is. There's even a burden to the ambition, to the, to the stress, to the desire, to the trauma that Goro has had to deal with, that he's been using to spur him on. That puts a weight on them. And it's and it's clever and heartfelt. And, and, and I connect with it. This is their coping mechanism. These are these are the people who help keep them <laughs> keep them solid. So I'm really glad. Like the reason I, I love this so much is because it really gives value to Genos. Like, Genos is my favorite character, like, like I talked about this, but it gives so much more value to the character of Genos. Like, it's not just the whole disciple thing. It's like, it's not just Saitama that's giving to Genos, but Saitama is also taken from this relationship as well. And I love to see that. Like, that's, that's probably the best part of this entire, like, to be honest, of this entire fight, the fact that Saitama needs Genos just as much as Genos wants to learn from Saitama. That's that's satisfying. Um, but let's keep pushing, bro. We're, shit, we're already over, bro. We might as, this ain't even gonna be a short one no more, bro. Uh, Saitama proved that he was able to copy uh, most most of uh, Goro's techniques. Um, Saitama being able to pull that off, that time travel shit is crazy. Um, <sighs> like. <laughs> I don't know what this says about the future. Does this mean that Saitama has the ability to learn powers? And I don't mean, I'm not talking about copying. Because obviously his copying was just doing the, pulling off the same feats that Goro was pulling off in different methods. I'm talking about the fact that he was able to use this, this magical power or whatever. Like, is he going to be able to use magic now? Or like, is, he, is there like some, some type of secret like ability that Saitama has now? Like, uh, <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. Um, I mean... That whole Phoenix space thing, interference, was weird, but I don't think that's the same thing. That is magic, but I don't think it's the same thing that's going on here. Um, here's the important part. So, Goro redeems himself at the end of this, or attempts to redeem himself at the end of this, by giving Saitama the key to going back and fixing this ominous end that is Goro. In the process, before Goro is able to teach him, God takes his power back, or attempts to take his power back. If anyone can master the power of God without taking God's hand, it's you. There's a biblical story, the story of Sodoma, Sodoma and Gomorrah, where because this city was so sinful and disobeyed God, they were going to be destroyed. And there was not a single good person, not a single good soul in that city besides this individual and his family. So they brought him out. Two angels came to do God's will to destroy the city. And they try to get this individual out. 
But they got him out. He didn't want to. He was reluctant. But they got him out. And they were free. The destruction began. The destruction of these cities began. And the angels told them, told this individual and his family, don't look back. Don't even turn back. Don't glance. Just move on. And it was symbolic telling them, or it can be interpreted symbolically, telling you to move forward and don't look back to the past, to the treacherous the evils of the past. But it also had a literal sense. The individual's wife did look back, and she was turned to salt. I believe this is this is just a reference to the fact that if you disobey God, this is the result. That's what I think this is supposed to be representing. I don't I can't find any other deep symbolism as to why Garo turned to salt while <laughs> home was basically disintegrated. Can't tell you why Orochi got killed and <laughs> why like Psychos isn't dead. I can't tell you if like Psycho still has like is still blessed. I, I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know those three different cases. All I know is that if you disobey God, he kills you. In this instance, he turned him to sword. So that seems to correlate. Either way, I got a comment in the comment section of somebody trying to claim that Goro isn't dead. I guess I need to specify this because this is worth specifying. What happened in, this, in chapter 168 of One Punch Man is that Goro taught Saitama a technique of traveling back in time. That's why we saw the pictures of the different events that were floating past Saitama's vision. That's why he saw and mentioned that he was seeing all these different things. Saitama began to travel back in time. Wow, he saw the serious punch, the the omnidirectional serious punch. He saw the the uh, the gravity knuckle, um, nuclear fusion combo. Um, he saw the whole portal thing that was going on with blast. He was going back in time. He even saw when Gorilla walked up, and that's when he came in. The reason why Gorilla is dead is because. He turned to salt, and that's in that continuity. In that sequence of events, that's what happened to Goro. Saitama is the only thing that came back, along with the core. They came back. I don't know why the core didn't fuse with the original or the component that's here. But that's the difference. Because Saitama fused with the individual or the present Saitama, he's back. And this is a new existence. The other future did not occur. Saitama is in the current, a different timeline. But in the timeline that the Saitama came from, that fused, Goro died. He turned to salt. So yes, that was that ominous end. Saitama did see that ominous end. And then he went back in time to stop that ominous end. That did happen. All those events did happen. All the heroes on the surface did die. They are dead. But now, Saitama arrived right before he irradiated all the individuals on the surface and clapped cheeks. Things, he saved the day. He came on time. He gave him the opportunity that Saitama missed. So there it is. Um, it's an expected end. It's a fitting end. We are now going to get a different aspect, a different viewpoint possibility, or a different result of this from where we, we've technically entertained all the possibilities. We did get to see Goro die. Saitama did, or no, God killed Goro. But now we're gonna get the opportunity to go through a different sequence of events. So I'm looking forward to this. Um, and I'd like to see what, ha what happens, like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm not expecting a redraw, but this is prime material for a redraw. So we'll hold our horses and we'll see what happens here. Um, uh, 
uh, we already talked about like the Phil Fusion thing. I guess we could talk about Saitama not remembering um, what happened. Him just remembering the, the gamma ray burst. Um, but then him saying like, oh, you're alive, Tinos? Like, ooh, we'll see. Um, and it is, it is also going to be interesting to see what happens to Garou now. Um, because the power is leaving him, but in the quote verbatim, Garo yells out, my power, it's escaping somewhere. We don't know if he's going to turn to stone here. Does it look like it? Hopefully not. Or excuse me, turn to stone here. But we'll see. Like the video, subscribe. I didn't, I didn't want to go this long. Um, and the podcast is going to be packed, packed. So stay tuned for that. That's where we're going to go longer. But I'm trying to get these reviews to be down to 10 minutes. There's a lot to talk about doing this greatness, man. Yo, huh?